so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Proverbs 22, 24, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. This is a very strong warning. Leaders should not be known for being furious and angry. Right? Furious means mad, like madness, as in crazy. Like I knew this guy one time, and while he's preaching, like you could tell this guy was just seeing red. He couldn't even hold his, like he was just like angry, and it's like, dude, calm down. You don't even know, you're not even preaching the Bible anymore. You're just showing off of your anger. And some of the things that he said, in his anger, he said things that were wrong according to the scriptures, but he was just trying to show off, just trying to get angry about an issue, rather than preaching the word of God. The warning is, make no friendship with an angry man. Don't be associated with somebody that's known for their anger. Don't go with a furious man. Why? What's the warning? Lest thou learn his ways. If you learn the ways of an angry man, what's going to happen? Well, then it will be a snare unto your soul. You can watch the angry man get away with something. You can say, that was cool. I want to do it. And then you go do it. And guess what? You're trapped. You're busted. It causes you problems. Yeah. Well, Brother Fannin, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. Well, let's look at that. Hold your finger here and go to Ephesians chapter 4. Because most know, be ye angry and sin not. And they say, see, you can be angry, but what does it mean to sin not within anger? And this is where most angry people mess up. Because I'm going to warn you, hate destroys churches. There are churches, they've lost their first love, they've lost their brotherly love, they're known for their hate, and they're destroying themselves. They're bickering inside, they're destroying themselves, they're tearing each other apart, and God's not blessing it. You know, there was an Australian missionary a little while back. He, he hated the Muslims so bad that he made it a point to go and get in a fight on the news with him. Y'all probably know who I'm talking about. And many people, well, yeah, we got to protect him. But, you know, he had a church in a foreign country as a missionary that was thriving and soul winning. And he said, I want to be known for my hate. I've made friendship with an angry man. And I want to be known that I'm furious just like him. And I want to learn his ways. And guess what happened? It was a snare unto his soul. It was a snare unto that church. You understand God actually destroyed that church. That candlestick was removed because the pastor of the church was known for anger. He was separated from his family for a month. And his life is still in disarray because of being known for his anger. Oh, the news found out he hated Muslims. Good job. And guess what? The church is no longer soul winning. It doesn't exist. That's foolishness. That's not of God. There's a U.S. preacher that had a similar problem. He hated queer so bad he made a public statement letting everybody know the only problem was he, had, he was in an agreement with his uh, 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 employer about representing his employer and he broke the agreement with his employer and he said things that his employer disagreed with. Oh yeah, put him to death. And his employer said, uh, you've broken our covenant. You need to go. You're fired. Now listen, people will say, oh, well, you, you, you're supporting, you've got to support the man of God and whatever he says. Well, look, we will preach what the Bible says. The Bible says put queers to death and under God's righteous judgment and His authority and His government, that's what the Bible says. That's true. That's righteous. But you know what? I am not going to speak on behalf of somebody else and say that my employer should support this. If I've made an agreement with, with an employer, you shouldn't wonder or be amazed when you lose your job. If you agree to represent somebody, don't break your covenant. And look, our goal is, is not just to offend the enemy. Our goal, is this, this is spiritual warfare, our goal is to get people saved. And I think there are people that don't count the cost, they just go to war. They don't count the cost, they just say, let me pop off at the mouth, let me act like an angry man, and they don't count the cost that it will be a snare unto their soul when they learn their ways. We need to avoid the angry man or, or you will become paranoid yourself. You'll think, oh, they're, they're after me, everybody's after me, they must all be reprobates. Listen, that's not the spirit of God. That is the spirit of fear. We need to have the spirit of love. He says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. You're in Ephesians chapter 4, and this is what the naysayers will say. Well, I have every right to be angry. Ephesians 4.26 says, Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon thy wrath. And this is what they, 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 they want to take it out of context. See, I can be angry. There is righteous indignation. Well, there is. That's true. And there's a time and a place for all things. A time for war, a time for peace, right? A time for hate, a time for love. That's what the Bible teaches. But if you let the sun go down upon your wrath and you wake up angry, 
you have failed. If you're known for anger every single day of the week, you have failed. You have sinned. You have sinned. That's out of balance. Look at verse 15 in this chapter. Let's take it in context. But speaking the truth in love, what? Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. He's saying the people that are angry all the time, they don't have love. Why? Because they haven't grown up yet. They're acting like a five-year-old that's not getting their way, and they think they can just throw a fit, and that, that, that's cool. Well, guess what? God doesn't like it. God doesn't appreciate it. And God will remove your candlestick if you don't repent. Look at verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon thy wrath, neither give place to the devil. So the man that's angry all the time has given place to the devil. They're not speaking truth with their neighbor. They're not speaking truth in love. They're, they're just perverting the words of God and using the Bible as a club to be a bully. That's not what a Christian should be known for. That is not righteous leadership. Look at, the, look at verse 29 here. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. If you're known for always saying something hateful, are you known for speaking grace? Are you known for edifying your brothers? Are you known for ministering to others? No, you're known for corrupt communication, and you have failed. For the grace of the lips, the king shall be his friend, we read earlier in Proverbs 22. Right? That it may minister grace unto the hearers. That's the goal. When you open your mouth, are you ministering grace? Are you letting co corrupt communication come out of your mouth? Look at verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you're angry all the time, the sun goes down and it comes back up and you're still angry. You've given place to the devil. You're in sin. And guess what? You're grieving the Holy Spirit. People use that phrase of grieving the Holy Spirit as if like, you know, it's just any time you're sinning. And, and there's an application there, you know. You know, somebody says, well, I, I, I ate more food than I should have. I was grieving the Holy Spirit. Or, or I should have preached the gospel. I was grieving the Holy Spirit. Maybe so. But the actual application in context is letting wicked words come out of your mouth. Letting an evil spirit work through a Christian. He says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Do you understand? Grieving the Holy Spirit is when you're known for anger and evil speaking. That is a sin. So when it says, be angry and sin not, I would recommend you start by being angry with your own sin of pride, your own sin of foolishness, your own shortcomings, and ask God to help you hate the sin in your life. Instead of always looking to blame somebody else for something, or instead of always saying, let's go pick a fight with the enemy, maybe that's not how God wants you to fight. Maybe He wants you to fight this warfare spiritually by opening up the Bible and preaching the gospel, not by being known as an angry man. Look at the next verse, verse 21. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If you're known for anger instead of forgiveness, you're a fool. You are not obeying the Bible. If you're not known for being tender-hearted as a Christian, I mean, David was known for being tender-hearted. He was tender to the things of the Lord. He helped other people. He loved other people. David wrote this psalm to his son, so that his son wouldn't be a fool, so that his son would have wisdom and be a good leader and help the people that he was commanded to help. As a leader, there was people that were under him that he was there to encourage them and edify them and minister unto them. And people have lost their focus. As Christians, we need to remember that we are kings and priests, right? We are a, we are a royal nation, right? We are peculiar people. God looks at us as spiritual royalty over this earth. And we need to lead by example, and that's through a spirit of love, not anger. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed.